Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. In the world of superbikes, the Italians are known for building some of the greatest. But until now, they haven't ventured into the electric world. Well, that's where the relatively new Energica Motor Company is coming to play with their brand new Ego. Great road to be testing it on, mate. I love riding Mulholland. And to be on, I guess you could say, legitimately the first ever production ready superbike is quite a treat, particularly that it comes out of Italy as well. The Italians have been making bikes forever. Some of the best in the world are known for it. Numbers wise, certainly not lacking any power. 145 foot pounds of torque, 136 horsepower. You got a top speed of like, I think it's 150 mile an hour, zero to 60 of three seconds. I mean, these are all really, really, really respectable sports bike numbers. Weight wise, however, that's where things get a little bit different. This is definitely a heavier beast. 570 pounds is a lot for a motorcycle. It's quite an achievement to be the very first electric superbike to come out of Italy for one, but potentially you could say that you're the first electric superbike in production in the world. It's also uh, very difficult to be the first because you don't have anyone to copy. Doing some stuff, I guess maybe you could say behind the scenes within Formula One and with other automakers. How much of that technology did you take and put it into the Ego, into the Energica brand? Uh, during the, the product development phase, uh, um, it, it is really crucial to use uh, these technologies and that's why we are starting to offer them uh, not only to motorsport or defense and so on, but also to car manufacturers and also for uh, during the R&D and product development process. Got all the bells and whistles that you can expect from a modern day motorcycle. In fact, some stuff that's actually even better. I mean, you've got Park Assist, which is basically you can pop it into reverse to help yourself go four miles an hour backwards. It's got mode settings, which is something that we keep seeing more and more and more in more modern superbikes. Things like rain mode, just to cut it back so we're not going to spin up the wheels and takes out some of the power. We've got eco mode to save the battery. We've got standard mode which is gonna kind of give you a nice mix of range and horsepower. And then you've got sport mode, which is gonna just turn things up a little notch, give you all of that horsepower, that torque, that is so, so much fun when it comes to riding electric motorcycles. So one thing I was very impressed with was the interface, the VCU, the dashboard, the fact that you have riding modes, adjustable riding modes, you can adjust the power delivery of the motorcycle. The first feeling is when you switch on the bike is the dashboard. Uh, new features will come, but we are still developing them because we have uh, so many ideas that uh, uh, couldn't fit uh, in the timing we had. So the regen is currently set to low, which means it's not super intrusive. I can let go a little bit and still talk in my hands and it just feels like it's slowing down like a regular motorcycle in second gear or something as you approach the lights. But that's fully adjustable using the dash. It's got a mode switch. You just hold that down for a couple of seconds. That'll bring up your mode. I'm going to switch that over to medium now. It's a little bit more intrusive on the regen now. And you can choose between four riding modes and four regen modes so you can reach up to 16 different combinations. There's a few things about it that <laughs> scream Italian. You've got the tubular trellis frame, frame by brakes. It's got Oz racing wheels. They come in a couple of different iterations. You've got your base model, which is selling for around about 34,000. Again, electric motorcycles are expensive. This one's a um, little bit more. I think it pushes it up to around 40 because we've got the coarser edition. So we've got the carbon fiber, We've got the Oz Racing wheels and we've got the DC charging. Now, if I was going to get one of these, I reckon DC charging is an absolute must. 80% of a charge in 30 minutes. That's better than your phone. The bike we got to ride was the Corsa edition, which is the up spec edition of the Ego. One of the unique parts of that bike was the fact that it had DC charging. It is an exceedingly fast 
way to charge a battery. And in this particular case, it's what, 25 to 30 minutes for an 80% charge. If you are something around 30 or 40%, it's even less. So it's maybe half the time because it's from zero to 80, you can have it in 20 to 25 minutes. But if you are maybe, you never stop when you are at zero. So maybe if you are 20 or 30%, it, would, it can take 15 to 20 minutes and you have it already. And they've done things and like pioneered these things like 3D printing using carbon fiber, which have added to this motorcycle, made components for this motorcycle. And for its first sort of foray into this world, it's kind of exciting as to where that might lead with those kind of expertise. We got to play with some of your products yesterday and one in particular was the Windform uh, 3D printed components that you're using to replace carbon fibre. It's not the same performance of course because it's not like carbon fibre laminated. The, the positive, the good thing is that you have a much more freedom to design it because you don't have the limits that you have when you make, for example, CNC machining. You don't have the toolpath. So this way you are able to make a much more more difficult shape but in some cases stronger and so you can anyway have enough performance to make the part with uh, a less performance materials. Another area I think I should really compliment the Energica on is its claimed range. I've been riding around on this thing for well quite a while now and it hasn't dropped, hasn't jumped its percentage in battery life at all. It seems like it's really well sorted, like a good electric car, I guess you could say. It's kind of predictable how much battery you're going to use. We spent, you know, uh, the best part of a morning riding the motorcycle. We did about 50 miles and we used exactly 50% of the battery and it actually far exceeded my expectations of range. We, we, we know we are aware about the range anxiety of people <laughs> and every 100 meters it's uh, recalculating what is the real consumption in that last 100 meters so it is very very accurate and the second step was uh, of course a good balance between uh, the amount of uh, energy stored on the bat in, uh, in the battery and the weight, and so the handling of the bike. So we decided of something close to 12 kilowatt hour, it's exactly 11.7. So after riding a few of these electric superbikes now, I guess the Energia car, I would say, is probably one of the most finished of the bunch. It's a proper motorcycle with proper rider aids that's actually quite comfortable to get around and it seems to be well sorted with very little problems. It hasn't broken down on me, that's one thing. Electric motorcycles, they generally run at a more expensive price compared to the gas powered. Is there going to be cheaper versions on the horizon for Energica? The, the market is still too small to have uh, economy of scale that can allow a uh, much cheaper and part. It's a wheel that have to start to, to go. But I have seen that things are changing quite quickly. I've been very fortunate to get to throw my leg over most of what's being offered currently in the electric superbike market. And whilst the Energica maybe isn't the fastest or the most exciting of this current crop of electric superbikes, it is the most ready for market, the most finished and the most polished example that we have out there. <laughs> and it's got reverse. <laughs> for Trends Logic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.